I feel that Mr. Kell must be the teacher of the year because there is no other teacher like him. His teaching style is fun and he keeps us engaged and his perkiness is what makes the teachings fun. Yes, Mr. Kell should be the teacher of the year because he tries and tries to relate to us and not all teachers try but he actually succeeds because he gets on our level he's like, I understand that I went through this. Yes, Mr. Kale should be the teacher of the year because he does know that line between being professional and being your friend. You can come to him with intellectual questions and get science questions answered, but you can also go to him and laugh with him and get friendly advice. I'd like you to scan around on your slide and look for cells that are, are kind of really nicely spread out. You can see if they're wadded up and kind of folded and wrinkled. You know, these are called squamous epithelial cells. It's just fun to say. Come on. Squam I see. I told you. It's fun. A great teacher is someone who, there's so many aspects of teaching, someone who is a master in all those aspects, a master of their content, a master of interpersonal skills and working with their students, someone who's creative, uh, someone who is researching what's, what's new in their content area. I think someone who works well with their colleagues, who works well with students and all the stakeholders that has a, has a good uh, relationship with, uh, with everyone involved in the success of those students. So I think somebody, a teacher who's truly great and truly effective, uh, is a master in all those areas. It's a, there's this giant orange circular thing. Yeah. I can't tell what it that is. That is a bubble. So that's there's a, a cell right in the middle of it, though. Oh, really? Yeah. So that, those, that's a big air bubble. Oh, that's a, that's a big one, then. Yeah. So the stain, the stain should make things blue. And so you can see the cytoplasm is kind of light blue, and then there's that dot in the middle. Yeah, that's the nucleus. That's the nucleus, right, right exactly. And so that stains dark blue because DNA stains dark blue with methylene blue. So that's your clue. It's almost fried egg appearance. Uh, so that big white spot is a bubble, but there's a little cell trapped right in that bubble. And that's actually probably a decent one to try and measure. What motivates me to teach is uh, I love my content area. I love biology. I love all aspects of biology. Uh, and particularly now that I'm teaching a bioscience pathway, the high level of uh, lab skills and the molecular biology and genetics, I love that. And I love the combination of, of getting students to, to understand that and to experience that. All right, so it's about 18, it's a little bigger, 19 millimeters. So right here, that's 20, right? So it was, it was, that image was about that far, you know, so it's about 19 millimeters. The image, the cell isn't that big, because that's, I mean, that would be a gigantic cell. So you have to divide that by 400. So, I mean, you can do the math on a calculator. You just divide 19 by 400, that will give you an approximate size of that, of that actual cell. I want students to know that science and their education in general doesn't just happen in the classroom. It happens every minute of, of their waking hours. And so as part of that philosophy, I want to make connections to other disciplines. I want to make connections outside the classroom, bring those things outside the classroom into the classroom. I just feel like we have so few minutes during the day to interact. And so I want to make sure that they understand that this little piece of our time is a piece of a much bigger, uh, much bigger experience that they have in their education. Can you oh, tell yeah. me if they start so, with an M or an N? You just commit to it. Which is bigger? <laughs> I think the N is bigger. Okay. Yeah. Which is what? The nucleus. Hey!